So what do you think of season 13 so far? Uh, I love it. Um my mic got caught under my big, fat, juicy ass. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I can answer your yeah, question. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask um, the question again. So what do you think of <laughs> season 13 so far? I love it. <laughs> That's the audio we missed, is you saying I love it and nothing else. Hi, it's me, Trixie Mattel, and welcome back to The Pit Stop, the show where we recap RuPaul's Drag Race. And today we're on season 13, episode six. And we have a guest who finally, finally on this show, we have somebody with just enough makeup on. Rock'em soccer, everybody. Woo! Woo! I actually woke up like this and I fell down the stairs. Someone broke a mirror at the very bottom and it, it just landed <laughs> on my face. No, sis, you fell to the bottom, you checked the mirror, and that mirror shattered. <laughs> I hate you! Hello, Rock, how are you? Brief interactions. Ugh. How are you? Brief interaction. <laughs> <laughs> I met you, what do you think, uh, about five years ago? I can probably find it by the end of this episode. You signed um, a mannequin head for me. I was like, can you sign this mannequin head? I know it's weird. And you said, get your f***ing sh together. <laughs> and then I got on Drag Race and I got eliminated second. So you never did get your f together. <laughs> How has your life changed since your episodes aired last year? Well, I gained 30 pounds, I lost 30 pounds, I gained 30 pounds, I lost 30 pounds, I got a dog, and now I'm living my best unemployed life. So what do you think <laughs> of season 13 so far? I love it because I grew up in a very unstable household. It makes me feel like I'm reliving those moments every day in the workroom because everyone's so confrontational. Christina Aguilera said it best, these are fighters, okay? Well, Rock, we made it to episode six and the queens are dropping. Finally. But sadly, last week, my mm. Milwaukee sis, Joey J, sashayed away. But in good news, Gottmik was the challenge winner. As we start to get to know these queens more, which queens are you loving or like really connecting with? Well, I love Gottmik. Thank you for not saying Gottmik anymore. So then we see Gottmik enter the workroom. So first up was Gottmik. What did you think of the day look? And with Gottmik, it's like, girl, that's her. She personally called me and said, I love when you say got meek, please don't change it. And I said, I won't. I think it's because of my accent. I think it's like with Scott, her name Scott Meek. I love Tamisha. Yeah. I really love Tamisha. She is absolutely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite people. Great in the uh, confessionals, solid runways. Who are we not feeling? Who are you kind of hazy on still? Well, I think that Elliot with two T's should add another T and then be a triple threat. Now, when the queens enter the workroom, tension is high from last week's Untucked because Candy Muse and Tamisha Iman got into it. Rock, do you live for the drama? I live for the, we were watching it and I was like grabbing my computer screen going, get her, punch her in the mouth. Yeah, it's fierce. I, my nipples got so erect when I was watching that scene. I love Drag Race because it's the only show where people who speak English as their first language will get captioned because drag queens' speech patterns are so all over the place. I love when drag queens fight in the same room as long as I'm not involved because I like to spill the tea later because I like to be like, so you know what happened the other day? Oh, I'm not going to say it. I shouldn't say it. <laughs> so what do you think about Candy has gotten under Tamisha's skin? Candy rubs Tamisha like someone rubs butter underneath the skin of a turkey before Thanksgiving so that it gets crispy. So when they go in for that first bite, it's a big crunch and everyone can hear it. I will say, I think that Candy's the type of personality that if she finds out she's getting under your skin, she's not gonna go, I'm sorry, that was wrong of me. Let me redact that. She's like, oh, well, I'm under everybody's skin. So like, you know, it's like a challenge to get more intense. If she gets under your skin, she's like, oh, so you thought it was okay to have skin in the first place. <laughs> anyway, RuPaul enters the workroom and explains that for the mini challenge this week, the queens have to partner up and make a wallpaper look and then provide commentary on that look. Rock, which queen from your season would you have wanted to partner with? I would probably go for Gigi Good and she would be the one dressing up because her waist is like this small, so we'd only have to use like maybe a quarter of yeah. the wallpaper. We could finish in five minutes and have the other 25 minutes just to like kiki, get some water, maybe go pee or something. I'm totally with you. I think that some of the groups did that. You can tell like they picked the Gottmik to model or the Utica, I mean, 
less fabric is less work, let's be honest. Who was your favorite? God, of all the looks, I actually like the Elliot look a lot. They had 30 minutes to make a giant shouldered look. Like it didn't look like they just wrapped it around their body. Like they made a structured garment and turned Elliot with two T's into Chanel from All Stars in that cheerleading challenge with big shoulders. Who stood out the most to you in this mini challenge? I really liked uh, Got Mixed Look because of the, mostly because of, like, because of the print, the way they sold it. The uh, dress looked really good on her. Yes. Uh, but I have to say, I also really liked Elliot with two T's too because of the, just the giant structured shoulder. Elliot and Tamisha win the mini challenge. Do you think they seemed a little bit surprised? Yeah, they seemed really surprised. I thought that they should have won the mini challenge for sure. But if you're surprised at winning a mini challenge, maybe you need to check your confidence levels a little bit. You should go into every challenge pissed you didn't win. So RuPaul announces for the maxi challenge this week, it's time to disco. Specifically, the queens have to compete in a disco dance challenge with their partners from the mini challenge. Now there's a lot to talk about, but first, Rock, what are your thoughts on disco? Favorite disco song? Um, uh, My Heart Will Go On. Your favorite disco song? I will say I don't have a great uh, disco vocabulary, but I've learned all my disco music from Drag Race, so the children are educating the children. Rue talks with all the groups, and we quickly find out that these queens know absolutely nothing about disco. A similar thing happened to me when I was doing the pop art ball, and he said, what do you know about Andy Warhol? And I said, nothing. And RuPaul said, when were you born? And I said, 1989. And RuPaul said, if you were any closer, I would slap you. So you're a queen that can cluck and buck and do the splits. Do you think you would have done well in this challenge? I think that I could have done pretty well in this challenge, especially because it's different lip syncing for your life than lip syncing to perform, you know? Oh, totally. And being able to dance to disco is something you can either do in drag or you can't. Which disco era would you have wanted? I would have probably wanted, with the choreography that they were given, the Studio 54 era, because I absolutely love the choreography for it. Also, disco and sex was really funny too. And I love a hula hoop. I think you and I could have really slayed the hula hoop fantasy. For me, if I have a hula hoop in front of my face, it's more like um, if someone was like, circle the problem. Nothing draws attention <laughs> to you like circling yourself over and over again. So we get to the choreography and it quickly becomes evident which queens have dance experience and which ones do not. How do you think these queens took to the choreography, specifically the queen's sweat props? I mean, you know, choreography is hard, especially when you're learning it on not that for day. Everyone. You just got the challenge. It's not hard for everyone. Uh, th yeah, it is hard for everyone. Don't brush your hair at me. <laughs> choreography is hard, especially on the first day getting it. The queens that do get it, like uh, Rosé and, and Denali and Olivia and Simone, like, that, it, it's intimidating, especially when you're at the sides watching the other girls. It's really intimidating to see people succeed and get their choreography right, or see people get better choreography like was the case with Elliot. What Utica does is kind of smart, where she, if she can't dance, she's gonna camp up a character. You think what Utica did this episode was smart? <laughs> <laughs> did I say that? We'll get to how that's received later in the episode. I, at first, was like, who would want the Disco Sucks era? But then hearing the story of it, about how it's sort of like the conservative world trying to take down Disco, I'm like, that's fierce. That's the story you want to be involved in. Take Disco out of schools. So before the performance, the clique of Tina, Candy, and Gottmik have named themselves the Mean Girls. What do you think of this self-appointed name? I think if you're gonna call yourself the Mean Girls, you're not really that mean. It's true! We're gonna be the Mean Girls, you doo-doo poopy head. Like, we're not even paying attention to you. We also learned that Olivia once weighed 300 pounds and that drag helped her along with that journey. I'm happy that drag helped Olivia love her body. Olivia, we would love you as a 300 pound drag queen. We would love you as a 30 pound drag queen. The thing is that drag is such an immersive, transformative art form. And here's the thing, for all of you kids out there right now, you will have, you like either you will have a transformation story uh, internally, externally, you will learn to love yourself and be comfortable in your own body. Whatever trauma you have from being, you know, I bet you as a young kid, she said she felt very uncomfortable. 
she doesn't carry any of that with her because she she loves herself, you know? So we get to the main stage where the queens perform in RuPaul's disco mentry. How did you think the girls did? Good. <laughs> I will say this is one of my favorite dancing challenges on Drag Race I've seen. I really loved it. We got to see who can live up to the challenges that they're given, especially choreography and stage presence wise. Yeah, who stood out to you? I loved Rosé and Utica's group. Simone looked really good in her outfit, but okay. Favorite, favorite, favorite person throughout the entire thing was Olivia. Girl! I keep talking about Olivia. That hair! She was just The confidence, the movement. I mean, be, listen, in life, be Olivia. In any situation, be her. Oh my God. And I think too, Tina really turned it. I mean, Tina turned it. Girl, this, Elliot kind of served. Like, that level of physical performance with like her eyes still being very alive as a performer. You know, sometimes good dancers turn off, they have dead eyes. Dead inside. She was not doing that. Rose and Denali took these out with the trash. It was pretty amazing. It was, they got a lot of twirls. They got a lot of freaking high kicks. They got a lot of New York City choreography, if you know what I'm saying. Who's on the struggle bus, you think, going into deliberations? Utica struggled because she made it overly to camp. And here's the thing is RuPaul absolutely adores and loves disco. If you over camp it and try to sell the whole era of disco as a joke, RuPaul's probably not gonna like that. Girl Utica, that is, she is the driver of the struggle bus. She is the mechanic of the struggle bus. She is the metal frame that holds the struggle bus together. If you're packing yourself a disco outfit, I want you to ask yourself, does this suck ass? <laughs> it's a very simple question. Look in the mirror and go, does this suck ass? If it does, you go back to square one, you start again. Another MVP of the struggle bus tonight was Candy Muse. Oh, completely. Did you take some stretch velvet and stretch around one arm? Because like, it's not, it was not serving. What if she says yes? Are you gonna clock her then, huh? What if that was the only thing she had? I was watching it thinking, this looks like something that somebody who doesn't sew would make for a sewing challenge. That's what it looked like. <laughs> it looks wow. bad. Oh. Yeah. It's runway time and the category is little black dress. I love this category. What do you think of it? I think the dresses need to be littler. They need to be blacker. I like a theme like this because surface level, it's doable. But this is the type of runway where you're gonna have to use imagination to make it special. And we find out very quickly that some of these are pretty basic. If you hear little black dress and you're fully not naked with a tiny dress, around your nether regions, then you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, exactly. Um, let's quickly go through the looks. First up, Tina Burner, what do you think? Rotted, gutted, That's basic, that's good. tired. It was a good. Campy without being exciting. That was a great, that was a good outfit. Shut that up! Was my favorite of the night. It I was absolutely gorgeous. I just hated it. I, when, they, when, it when it said, first up, Tina Burner, I, I, there's a moment where I said, if she comes around this corner in some red and yellow that does not flatter her in any way, I'm gonna scream. And that's exactly what happened. Tina, you are pasty and you have red, yellow, and orange. You look like a spooky candy corn. I completely forgot she had something on over it. Do you remember that? Oh, I compl- You know what the problem was, Rock? I saw what was over it and I said, I'm gonna hate what's under this. All right, uh, up next we have Candy Muse in her little black dress. What did you think? It was, um, <laughs> I thought there was more <laughs> Um <laughs> I hated it. It was so bad. I thought she looked like a potholder. That's a good way to put it. It was so weird. I mean, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be using the F word. I understand that this is a family program, but I get very passionate when saying horrible things about other people. Most of her dress was white. Most of the outfit was white. And two, like you, ha you also have to think that an outfit like that is not gonna work from all angles. If, it, if you're only gonna be shown from the front, you know, walk stupidly and only show it from the front, quickly turn to the back, you know? I like the narrative effort 
of course, I love the storytelling. I just didn't think it was as successful as it was probably perceived. And I bet when Candy watches this episode tonight, she'll go, that didn't look like I thought it did, you know? And that's okay. Up next, we have Got Mick. Girl. 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 Girl, I, I, she turned that corner and I, I was alone watching it and I went, <gasps> it just took my breath away. She turned the corner so hot. The point of little black dress is you think that everyone has this simple little black dress that gives them the same silhouette and everything too. If you can make us gag and like gasp at the fact that you turn the concept around so fiercely, then you've done your job. It gave me big Violet Tchotchke energy, which is I, I think a big compliment because it was really strong in concept and a lot of skin. And I just thought, that's how you technically wear, you've checked the box of I'm wearing a little black dress, but you're wearing it in a way that we would have never seen coming. Like, so cool. I just thought it was good. Up next, we have Elliot with two T's. I thought it was really simple when they said that it was simple, basic, middle of the road, safe. Like, it's good. It's gorgeous. You look great and the hair is flowing. You look gorgeous and beautiful. But the thing is that you're on Drag Race now. And you have these other girls who took the concept of little black dress and they made it, like, you have to make it narratively interesting. Yeah, I don't want to be unfair, but what you tell me in that outfit is, oh, you really don't have any imagination at all. <laughs> I mean, like, you really just said, oh, good, I already have a little black dress. I just have to put it on. If you get the list and it says little black dress and then you turn and you go, oh, I have one, then that's not doing the challenge. Exactly. I mean, let's, don't get me wrong. Elliot looked beautiful beautiful her makeup her hair her body she looked beautiful and she said this is classic elliot where you really have to take a second look is it a man or a woman i'm like i mean she looks she looks like a woman she looked beautiful to me she iman little black dress i didn't think it was like super bad but it was just unfortunate to have the all the weight in the front it should be built on the top or the hips not the middle sometimes it doesn't look like how you planned it on you based on like the body form. Yeah. You know? Th that being said, as usual, her hair and makeup was beautiful. Olivia Lux, oh my God. It kind of gave me like an almost an 80s fantasy sort of look with the hair. She looked- um, And she showed off her best asset, which is her. She looked like RuPaul and looking good, feeling gorgeous. She looked so pretty. For her to come down the runway with such a rocking ass bod after telling her story of like being made fun of for being overweight and then almost like or like being told by the doctor she was obese to have that storyline and to come out mm, oh mm, wah, oh oh mm, wah, to come out like that is disrespectful to the rest of us who still haven't made that journey yet. Why don't we take a look at Utica? What's the opposite of this? Is Girl, like this? yeah, it was not this. It was. She said she was her earrings. It was just, I, I really like Utica, but oh my God. When you have to go out there and the judges ask, can you explain this look to me? That's when you're like, I failed. But the thing is that she, like, she can't go back. She's covered in gold. She's got a hanger com coming out of her head. She's got to double down on the look. She's got to be like, I'm earrings. So what? <laughs> you know, like she... <laughs> What did you think of Denali? Oh, the spider webs. Right when she came out, I went like this. Like, I was, I got spider webs too right here under my arm, girl. This is my favorite Denali look so far of the season. It was so beautiful. I loved the back. I loved the webs. And when she took that hat off and there was eyes underneath, I said, you better work. This was the moment in the in the episode where I wanted her to win the challenge. When I when the, when the eyes were on the forehead, I said I hope she wins. What did you think of Rosé? Oh, the paramecium. She's the mitochondria, the paramecium. She's the bacteria. She said I wanted to single sell you a garment. A hundred percent. Yes. I didn't like it. I didn't live, but I mean I lived. I didn't live, but life finds a way, and it starts with a single cell. <laughs> the runway struggle bus was Lala Ree's hemline on her dress. Oh my God. That woman had a tank top on. 
I saw her hoo-ha. The second she turned the runway, I went, that's too short. And then she walks and I went, oh my God, that's short. You can't kick and buck in something that's like completely fitted to your knees and stuff. Like she looked like she was about to jump out into a split in that outfit. Like that's a performing dress. You think that's a performing dress? You couldn't move in that. You couldn't lift a leg without it being like at your, be at your belly button. Well, that's the point. I guess you and I perform very differently. You know, I'm very active. I use my legs a lot. I like to use a very diverse movement vocabulary. All right, finally we have Simone. That moment she turned around and I could see that whale tail. It was so hot, so sexy. I'm gonna be honest, I just didn't live. I liked the hair, I didn't like the dress. I liked the hair and the reference to RuPaul's uh, Back to My Roots. It did have a little bit of like, you know, uh, Quidditch fantasy it was, going on it was, there. It was, it was the women of BAPS playing Quidditch on that head. That's what it was. <laughs> if you had to pick one, which one was your favorite look of the week? Um, favorite look would probably have to be Got Mick. Got Mick, okay. Girl, Denali really let me have it. And I'm just, this is not a read. Denali's runways, I don't live. But for this, I did live. I did live. For something like a little black dress, which should be pretty universally flattering, there were several misses this week. I think Tina Burner's was really bad. <laughs> and I love Tina Burner. And I've seen Tina's shows, and she is so menacing to those audiences. I'm afraid she's gonna come for me, but. I really hated Tina's, and I equally I equally hated Utica's. You know what, I, my final answer, I think Utica's was the least successful because the reference wasn't even clear. And it wasn't, even if it was a clear reference, the look wasn't good. You picked Utica because she can't, she doesn't look like she could suplex you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> my least favorite look, I'll say it, was Tina Burner's. We both forgot she had a reveal. Yeah. That is not good. That's you, not we good. We can't remember you had a reveal. That's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. After judges critiques, we find out that the winner is Olivia Lux. Do you agree? I agree. Completely, 100% agree. I will have a picture of her in that disco challenge flailing that, hand, that hair around. I will think of it forever. Okay, in the bottom two, we have Candy Muse and Tamisha Iman after their epic fight. Do you agree with this bottom two? I agree with this bottom two because it fits in with my fantasy of people fighting. I think Utica belonged in this bottom two. Okay, if I'm being honest, I really don't think that Tamisha should have been there because she danced really good and her runway wasn't as bad as Utica's too. Like I appreciate the creativity, but the execution wasn't there. Yes. I think that Utica should have been in the bottom with Candy. If we say they all did bad in the challenge. Of the runways, I think Tamisha's was the strongest of the bottom. So like, I was shocked when Utica wasn't lip syncing tonight. I'm gonna be honest, I was shocked. So Candy and Tamisha lip synced to Hit em Up Style by Blue Cantrell. What did you think of this lip sync? I thought that Tamisha really embodied the song. She did take a few deep steps, like a lot of like, she would take a step and it's like when you lose a shoe and you go down like three inches. Yes! And like, whoa, 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 yes. whoa, 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 whoa. It was a good lip sync. They're both really good lip syncers. I would lose against either of them in any song at any moment. They're just both really good lip syncers. Candy wins the lip sync and bursts into tears, which means sadly, Tamisha Iman sashays away. <sighs> Do you agree with the outcome? I was really rooting for Tamisha to go all the way to the end. I know! And her story was so beautiful and touched all of our hearts and I, Honestly, I really, really wish she could have stayed, but I really, do, I, I do like Candy too. I really do appreciate her. She's got a young contemporary take on drag. She's a good lip syncer and she's a great personality. If like we had to, it's not fair for us to choose one over the other. Yeah. But I'm glad that Candy got to stay. If we're talking about my personal favorite, I just like Tamisha's drag more than I like Candy's drag. So I personally would have liked to see Tamisha longer. That being said, Candy's a very strong competitor who I frankly, I couldn't envision her going home this early either. Do you think it was classy of Tamisha to hug Candy on the way out? Tamisha knows that when it comes down to it, they are sisters, like they're sisters. And then you got a lip sync against someone else. I really appreciated that because Candy didn't want to send, like from the look of it at the very end of the lip sync, it didn't feel like Candy wanted to send her sister home. Yeah. Like we saw a fight, but we don't see the whole relationship between them. 
Rock, I'm so glad you could join me here on the Pit Stop today. Where can everybody find you? If you guys want to follow me, it's at Rock'em Soccer on everything, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, she just got verified. And if you guys want to find out how to do this look on your face, I also have a YouTube channel with a tutorial on how to do this. So that's a good plug, right? Seriously, good. I just, I love you so much. I love you so much. And um, I hope we get to work together soon. Again, I love you. I love you too. Can I, wait, one more question before you go. If you were a betting woman in Vegas, who are you picking to win so far? Uh, Olivia Lux. Oh, work bitch. Hell yeah. And thank you for watching The Pit Stop. Make sure you subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel because we are back next week for episode seven of season 13 of Drag Race. Bye. Look over here. The Drag Race YouTube channel is always bringing amazing content. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing.